The synthesis report is the culmination and convergence of the panel's efforts over the years to deliver the most robust and relevant climate change science to policymakers. IPCC's synthesis report was published on March 20th and this report is a summary of uh, six reports that the IPCC has released during its sixth assessment cycle. The synthesis report which was published this week collates the findings across all of this research across the past five years and essentially it presents a clear roadmap for how we can achieve a livable future in the era of climate change. Um, it provides all the latest science, the scientific evidence of how our climate system is currently faring. It provides uh, possible future impacts and it also provides a whole menu of options across various economic sectors for how we can really avert the worst of this crisis. So what are the top line findings from the synthesis report? First of all, the IPCC unequivocally now knows that human activities uh, such as burning of fossil fuels, cutting down of forests leads to excess emissions of greenhouse gases. And currently, global temperatures have risen by 1.1 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. That's a lot on a climatic scale. And this is not equally emitted by all. So wealthier countries, wealthier income groups within countries are emitting much more. Historically, they have emitted much more. The IPCC shows that in 2019, about 35% of the global population lived in countries emitting more than nine tons of CO2 per capita, while almost 41% live in countries emitting less than three tons. So this shows that there is widespread carbon inequality. Not all emitters are equal. There's quite a lot of policy action being taken to reduce emissions. So countries have made pledges known as nationally determined contributions to cut emissions. And this has led to a slowing down of the rapid increase in greenhouse gases accumulated in the atmosphere. However, even despite the current pledges made by countries, we are still likely to exceed the temperature target of 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, what this will do is at current levels of global warming, the extreme weather events that we are witnessing, they are likely to get worse. So droughts and heat waves are likely to become more frequent and more prolonged. Ocean acidification is likely to increase and even the capacity of our natural carbon sinks like land and the oceans to absorb this carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is going to decrease. So essentially our carbon sinks will become less effective. What is also happening is that we are depleting the available carbon budget. So uh, the IPCC estimated that at the beginning of 2020, we had about 500 gigatons of carbon dioxide that we could emit if we wanted a 50% chance of limited, limiting global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. This carbon budget based on current rates of emissions is likely to be depleted very soon um, and we could blow past the 1.5 degrees Celsius temperature target. The IPCC has um, certain prescriptions or findings on how we can manage the situation if we blow past 1.5 degrees Celsius, uh, known as an overshoot scenario. What if we cross that 1.5 C threshold? So there are technologies known as carbon dioxide removal technologies, such as direct air capture or bioenergy with carbon capture and storage. However, these technologies are still quite speculative and they come with a number of feasibility concerns, sustainability concerns, um, and they are untested at scale. So while theoretically blowing past 1.5 C means that we could deploy these technologies to bring temperatures back down, the feasibility of that is still quite a big unknown, um, especially on a global scale. But 
the good news is that feasible effective um low cost options are available both for mitigation as well as adaptation and this is really the the key message that uh, i believe must be picked up from the ipcc synthesis report the report lays out a whole menu of options from widespread electrification to greater deployment of solar and wind power and small scale hydropower to transitioning to greater adoption of battery powered electric vehicles um the ipcc states that several mitigation options notably solar energy wind energy electrification of urban systems etc are technically viable are becoming increasingly cost effective and are generally supported by the public so this is extremely positive and this is really where we should be putting all our energies going forward from a policy perspective The IPCC says that there is no dearth of global capital for the investments that are needed. It's really just a question of diverting and redirecting that capital towards climate action, overcoming the barriers that exist today particularly in developing countries. CSE is a, a strong advocate of the fact that the cost of financing of um green technologies renewable energy in developing countries is extremely high and needs to be brought down attention needs to be focused on providing affordable finance not just finance but affordable finance to developing countries to enable the green transition and shift away from the fossil fuel systems today which are uh, providing some very cheap energy in the developing world so this support is going to be crucial and has to come from the developed world So we know what the problem is we know what the solutions are but it's really a question of political will will we have the political will to implement all of these solutions we are far away from the kind of progress that we need to make on emission cuts and a lot more needs to be done